we're joined today by All-American Hannah Campbell from the cross-country team. Hannah, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Uh, so to start out with, uh, could you just uh, tell us a little bit about last year, your memories? You had a great season and specifically what it was like at Nationals uh, for you. Yeah, last season was great. I have a lot of great memories. Probably regionals was probably one of the most memorable meets because we made it as a team. So that was really fun. Um, it was disappointing that our whole team didn't make it to nationals, but fortunately I was able to qualify individually and the boys made it. So I was able to go with them and we took a big charter bus to nationals and a bunch of the girls went with us. So that was really fun. It was really memorable. And um, the race at nationals, you'll never race that, like you'll never experience a national race until like you actually run in one. Cause it's just totally a different atmosphere and you're not really expecting it, but it's a very, it's a very good experience and it was really fun and um, I'm very glad that I got to go and very thankful and I just give the Lord all the credit for me allowing me to go to that. Now that we're moving into the, the new season, tell us a little bit about how you prepare through the summer and I know you just started preseason training, but tell us how that goes for you, how you get ready for the year. Yeah, so summer miles, it's a lot. Um, I live like two hours away so I don't really none of the girls are really around me so I have to train by myself a lot so it's really hard to find motivation to get out the door every morning to run but um, I just get out and run every morning and just try and put my summer miles in and get in the workouts that need to be done and then now we're um, in preseason like you said so we have the seven mile time trial coming up and on Wednesday and so we're all really excited about that to see where we are and then we have a two-mile time trial coming up in a few weeks, so we're all really excited to get the season going and get everything rolling. And then what are some of your goals for the team overall and then for you as an individual for this year? For the team, I just want us to all do our best and just to strive to do our best, no matter whether that's a PR or just whatever that is. I just want every, every girl to do their best. And, I mean, to win conference since we're changing from the GLIAC to the GMAC and we're hosting it this year, so that's kind of a lot of pressure on us. So I really hope that we can like, do really well at that meet and prepare and train on our course and so we have a good idea and just like know the course really well and we can train really well and we can go ahead and win that meet. And then at regionals, I really hope that we can make it to nationals. I fully believe that our team this year, if everything works out, that we will make it. So. I'm really hoping that we'll make it to nationals. And then individually, my goal is to make it to nationals again. Um, we'll see if that works out. Just whatever happens, I know that the Lord's in control, so um, he'll do whatever whatever is happens is his will. Well, thank you very much for the time. Good luck this year. Thank you. Thank you. We're joined today by men's cross-country runner Lauren Strasbaugh. Lauren, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Of course. How was, uh, how was your summer? And uh, talk to us a little bit about how you prepare for the season. I know preseason just getting going now, but talk to us how, about how you get ready. Uh, well, well, I actually lived in Canton. I'm originally from like the Bowling Green area, so it's about three hours away uh, with four or five other guys. We lived in a house. And so the goal going in is to be able to all train together. And then through a really odd turn of events, I ended up working about 70 hours a week. So. <laughs> There's a lot of runs done at like uh, 11 o'clock or midnight or really early in the morning, but I think um, really the summer is a great reminder of how sovereign God is over your body and how he does surprising things because things didn't go perfectly, but we we're still able to piece together really, really solid workouts and things worked out well. Um, it's just a lot of base training. We've taken more of a conservative approach this year, um, trying to make sure we last in the later parts of the season. and. Um, we start getting to the high mileage now. For me, it's about 100, 110 miles a week and two or three workouts a week, just uh, trying to be conservative, but at the same time, push our bodies to that edge to get the most we can at every workout. This is going to be actually Coach Hazen's 50th year at Malone. Talk to us a little bit about what it's like to run for Coach, someone with so much experience and all his accomplishments and everything. I mean, he is uh, hes a treat. I think... Coming in as a freshman, uh, obviously there's like this stigma, of course. The year after I came in was uh, his Olympic year. And so at first you're like thinking he's this legend and then you start to listen to other people or like he'll, I think he kind of like tries to pretend to be forgetful, like trick you into thinking he's an old man. So then you're like, you're like, oh, kind of thinking maybe he doesn't know what he's talking about. And then something will just flip around and you realize he's a genius. He's one of the best coaches in the nation in the world. So, I mean, he's always fun. Um, and I think we've really grown closer over the years and it's uh, beneficial for 
mine and his relationship, he really individualizes everything on the team, which is why we're such a good program. And then really uh, make sure he knows what everybody else is doing and is watching out for their individual interests as well as their faith and their personal life. It's not all about running here. You had a, a good year, a great year last year. The team made it to nationals. What are some of your uh, goals as a team for this mm -hmm. year? And then you personally as an individual, what are some of your goals? Mm -hmm. um, I think speaking on last year, I mean, it was almost like a year of almost. Like we, we made it there, but we didn't do it like as well as we wanted to. And we didn't get the All-American spots we wanted to, things like that. But obviously, we're still grateful for the opportunity. Um, so this year, I guess it's... We're kind of looking to finish off the job, but still at the same time, making sure like we're enjoying it, having fun with it. Uh, I think a lot of us have started to realize you run best when you're not focusing on putting the pressure on every single meet, more so just realizing that you got to have that in between that flow and that pressure. You can't just, you can't force it. Um, so goal wise, I guess we like to have the process based goals, uh, just grow closer as a team and do what we can. I mean. Like you said, it's a 50 year tradition and you'll talk to the guys on the original team and all they say is team first, team first. So like that's that's what we try and echo still here is run for the team. And I think uh, we obviously want to make it back to that national meet. We have a lot of things in the works. We have some real stud freshmen coming in and some from last year that are going to mature. So we're playing around with eligibility and things like that. Just going to see how things work out and uh, go from there individually. Um, I'll just see where things go, I guess, and just run to my best of my ability. Uh, I don't want to put any tags on anything, but uh, I don't really think I've lived up close to my potential yet, so I'm hoping the, the sky's the limit right now. Well, great. Thanks for taking the time to join us today. Thank you. Thanks. All right. We're joined by head men's and women's cross-country coach Jack Hazen. Jack, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, the 125th anniversary of Malone, but it's also the 50th year of your Malone coaching career. So tell us uh, what your thoughts are about that. Uh, you've had a wonderful, so many great accomplishments, uh, but what does it mean for your 50th year? Well, I, I don't really think it's been that long, I, 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 uh, but I guess it has. Uh, it's really gone by fast, and uh, uh, the toughest thing I face, I think, is talking to recruits and having them think about coming to Malone because they think he's going to retire, and I tell them, no, I'm not going to retire. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's exciting to to uh, continue on and uh, I, ha I see no end in sight. I'm sure uh, there will be uh, an end, uh, but it's, uh, it's great that, that I've been blessed with good health and, uh, and mental faculties to keep going and, and uh, I really appreciate that. I, I always look and, and mention my mentor, Joe Vijo, who is a longtime NAI successful coach at Adams State University and, uh, and now at age 86 has two Olympians in the uh, finals at the uh, uh, Olympic Games, and uh, uh, if he can do it, uh, I'm going to keep trying. What are your uh, expectations coming into 2016 for your for your team? Well, our our expectations are always uh, kind of performance oriented. We we want our our athletes to achieve PRs. Every one of the athletes, every every time out, it doesn't always happen, but uh, we we try to train in such a way that that we do it safely. And uh, intelligently, and uh, and that we make progress progressions as we go, and uh, it enables each athlete to experience a, a personal best uh, m most of the time. And uh, we we of course look at the team score, and and we like to get to nationals. We like to uh, challenge the conference and and do things as a team. But we don't really look so much at that as just making personal gains. Uh, and making uh, having each individual athlete go after their best, uh, and then the rest will take care of itself. We have no control uh, in what other teams are doing. Uh, we've always kind of faced, approached it that way. Uh, Adam State, when they were on their eighth straight national title, uh, we didn't, you know, go into the meet uh, hoping to or, or planning on trying to knock them off. We just tried to run our best, and that always kind of works out for the best. Absolutely. Uh, new conference this year from Malone, the Great Midwest Athletic Conference. What are your thoughts on that move? Uh, a chance maybe to renew a little bit of a rivalry with Cedarville that we've had in previous years. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. It's uh, uh, the, the conference that we came out of was uh, uh, kind of, uh, uh, it was a, 
it was a situation where there were a lot of schools that uh, were state schools and, and were funded differently than the private schools. So it's, it's good to get back to a private school conference. So we're really excited about that. And uh, we look forward to competing against uh, uh, Cedarville, who traditionally has been a, a very strong team and, and one that we've always competed uh, against and, and, uh, and really respect. Uh, but all of the teams in the new conference, we're looking forward to getting to know them and, and competing with them. Your uh, schedule always features uh, a lot of Division I competition, and this year is certainly no different. Give us your thoughts uh, on the schedule and then the opportunity this year to host the, the GMAC championship. Yeah, well, we've, been, uh, we've had the good fortune to be invited by Akron, the University of Akron to compete in their opening meet each year. Uh, and it's against uh, Kent State and Youngstown State and University of Pittsburgh's coming this year. So we look forward to that. Then we go to Michigan State uh, and then we go to uh, the All-Ohio Championships and, and uh, uh, again run against D1 as well as everybody else uh, in Ohio. And then to the Disney Classic, although this year we're going to the pre-national meet. And, um, but at Disney we always ran against D1. And then, uh, and then the, the last half of the season is uh, usually just all D2, uh, starting with the conference and regionals. Uh, we look forward to hosting the, the conference this year. We, uh, we, we put on a, a, a really big high school meet, and, and then we have the district meet here, so uh, we have experience with, uh, with the chip timing, and uh, I think we're going to be able to, to put on a, a great meet for the new conference uh, that we're going into, and, and we're privileged in uh, and honored that, that they uh, thought of a, enough of us to let us do it the first year in. So that we look forward to that. Who are some of the, you got a lot of returners coming back and you also have a, a large group of newcomers. Who are some of the people that you're looking to lead this year for the, for the men's and women's team? Well, on the women's team, uh, Hannah, who you've uh, just interviewed, uh, is gonna be our uh, top runner and leader uh, as she was last year, or as she has been every year. Uh, but we have uh, uh, some other upperclassmen that, uh, that are really improving and we're excited about. Uh, Mackie Keller, Keller is going to be stepping up and uh, has, has had a good summer of training. Uh, Rachel Coons and uh, Laura Tweedy and Jade Smith will have definitely improved a lot in, in the, the, the past track season and will factor into our success, I'm sure. And then we have some, some f new freshmen that are coming in. and. And, uh, and, and I think they'll help us out as well. So uh, we'll, be, we'll be looking forward to seeing what they can do and, and it's pretty exciting. On the men's side, uh, uh, let me preface it by saying both men and women uh, teams have, half the team will be freshmen. And so uh, it's kind of an unknown, but we have some really talented freshmen coming. And so uh, both on the, on the women's side and the men's side, we're, we're excited about our, our young freshmen runners and how they'll develop. They've had great summer uh, of training and uh, we're, we're really looking forward to see, seeing them contribute and, uh, and help us, helping us move to that next level. In the NAI, we, we, uh, I, they used to keep a, a, a thing called the winningest team in the NAI. And on the men's side, we, were, we left the NAI being the winningest team. Uh, I think uh, 42 straight years we qualified for the national championships. And so as we reestablish ourselves in a new national organization, uh, the NCAA Division II, uh, we're hoping to continue building in that direction and establishing ourselves well in the NCAA. Uh, on the men's side, Lauren uh, uh, is, is certainly going to be one of our top runners, uh, as, as well as Nate Boyer, coming back with a lot of experience. Uh, we have the good fortune to uh, have Scott Whitaker uh, eligible again. And uh, Scott is in graduate school now. He's been here a long time. He was injured actually two years. He, he got some, uh, some really strange injuries that, that occurred and actually was not diagnosed properly at the first uh, diagnosis and had to have surgery. And so uh, he, we have him back for the entire year, uh, w which we're very excited about. And then a whole host of, of really talented young freshmen. So we're, we're just uh, kind of anticipating uh, what they can do. And uh, uh, I think we'll, we'll really have a good showing with both teams. 
All right, well, great, Coach. Thanks for taking the time to join us today, and good luck this year. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.